share it with you so you can watch it again in case you don't understand the first time. Okay, so like I said, the course is about media and society. So for your generation, especially when we talk about the media, okay, it's actually kind of not just kind, it is really part of your life, isn't it? All right. In my generation, when I was younger, there was a separation between media and life. We can switch on and switch off. If I want to watch TV, I have to switch on the TV. And then I have to switch off the TV and then I go on with my life. But I think for most of you, your life runs together with the media. Right? Okay, do you ever switch off your mobile phone? You switch it off? Do you, before you go to sleep, do you switch off your phone? Hmm? Yes, Nora. Nora. Yes, no, madam. No, 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 for alarm. A clock, huh? huh. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. But even if you switch off your phone, usually is the last thing you look at before you go to sleep, right? Okay. Yes. What do you check before you go to sleep? What's WhatsApp. That? I thought my Quran app. You know, some Quran <laughs> recitation before you sleep to throw away all the setan, but never mind. Okay, WhatsApp, right? To see whether your friend has replied. Okay, nobody's thinking about you. That's why you go to sleep. Right? If someone's messaging you, you don't sleep. Okay, so this is what we mean while media is so internalized in our everyday life. Okay, so we can talk about basic influences of effects. Everybody knows, okay? Everybody knows about the effect of me, media. But in this class, okay, and because this is a university course, we want to be able to look at the theoretical, okay, or the conceptual uh, analysis of these uh, effects. All right. Why do we have this relationship? Okay. Why do media affect society in a certain way? Okay. And because this is International Islamic University, we're going to focus more specifically on the Muslim society. Okay. But actually, when we talk about Muslim society, there is no one society. There is actually many Muslim societies, right? Because if you look at this class, okay, you have from China, you have from South Asia, you have from Malaysia, from Indonesia. We all have different backgrounds and experiences. And our background and experiences will influence, okay, our relationship with the me, with the media. There are certain effects that are general, universal. Okay, the media affects everyone the same way. But there are certain effects that are more contextualized and cultural based. Okay, so these are the things that we hope to unpack in this class. So if you are taking this course, it will help if you know more about the media in the sense that you don't just, you know, play with your social media that you know about the movie industries, for example, Okay, music, okay, television, that you know more about television than just Netflix. Okay, all right, so before we start with our first lecture today, I'm going to go through some kind of housekeeping. All right, so you can understand what we're going to do for the whole semester. So all our resources will be in the Google Classroom. Okay, let me share. All right, hold on. Okay, so everything will be on your Google Classroom. Can you see it? Okay? Yes, madam. All right, so this is our class. Okay, don't worry. There's enough chairs and tables for everyone in this class. Okay? So you can join this class by using this code. Okay? I will share with you. Okay, T-V-W-E-Y-K-A, all right, T-V-W-E-K-A. 
So when you join this class, all of the resources are already available for you. Okay. There should be uh, seven, eh, eh, seven topics, all right? Eh, actually, there should be eight. One more I have not uploaded, okay? But a usual semester will consist of 14 to 15 weeks, okay? Because this year is so unique, we will only have 12 weeks. So we will probably only cover seven topics, okay? So there will be no specific textbook, all right? So you really need to come to class, listen to the lecture. Because the slides will be your main source of reference. Okay, for each topic, I will also provide you with supporting reading materials. But if you don't come to class and listen to lecture, you wouldn't understand what is inside those mate materials. Okay, so I hope you understand how this class is going to work. Okay? So you can uh, download, okay, you can, every time we have, we discuss a particular topic, you can already refer to that particular chat, chapter, okay, or particular slide. For this one, why is it not, oh, it's supposed to be, uh, if you look at it here, okay, it's chronologically ordered. For here, okay, Muslim societies, this is our topic for two, for today. So you can already download the PowerPoint here, okay. So there is no excuse for anyone to say that you do not have access to resource. Okay, everybody is given the same amount of resources, okay? So you can go through this later. But what's most important is I want you to go here, okay? To look at the course details. Okay, so here I have provided for you the course outline. The assignment protocol and assignment rubrics, okay? Usually, students would take their course outline for granted. But this is actually a very important document because it tells you what this course is about. You must know uh, at the start, okay, what you are about to learn and what you should be able to achieve after you have taken this course. So, hopefully... By the end of the semester, you will already understand, okay, demonstrate an understanding of media systems in various countries. Okay, and also you can discuss the significance of mass media in society. Okay, and you can display, and the word display here is not that um, accurate. Okay, you can basically uh, uh, discuss, okay, or get into a discourse of the image of Islam in the global me media. Okay. So if you have not been following the classes, you might not be able to do this, okay? So here is the uh, topics that we will be covering, okay? So all of these are already available in Classroom. Here, uh, the most important document also is the coursework details. What is the work that you have to do for this course? Number one, follow lecture, online lecture, okay? Don't miss it. Number two, refer to your slides, download your slides. Number three, complete this. You have to do a written assignment, okay? A written uh, thesis that is going to be 25%. So, this will be a group work, okay? And then you will have a quiz, okay? That will account for 20% which is quite big, okay, this allocation because we need some assessment that will highlight individual marks, okay. And the third one is video, okay, so this video, so what are all these, we will discuss, all right. Uh, the submission weeks here is there's something wrong here, I will adjust them later, okay. But don't worry, okay, throughout the semester, we will be continuously discussing about your assignment. Okay, so here you can uh, take it that this is a, the most important assignment, okay, where you have to write a 4,000 to 5,000 words case study. Okay, so that's five of you, all right, on a particular theory. So this is not a theory class, but in our topics, we will be discussing concepts Okay, and general theories that talk about the relationship between media and society. So you would need to use those concepts, okay, to analyze 
the representation of a certain issue in a particular media. So as you can see here, there are three main components. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, it's really up to you what you want to do. But, okay, so I give you an example of the topics. You can do, for example, cultural imperialism. So this is one of the concepts that we will learn in class. So you, you want to use cultural, uh, what we call it, imperialism, and the representation of Muslims. This is the issue in American movies. This is the selected media. Okay? So there is three compo components for the assignment titles. Okay? Assignment topic. Or another example would be globalization and the representation of women in Korean TV series. Uh, this probably would be a popular title with the girls and boys, okay, who follow K-pop drama or whatsoever, okay. And then here, okay, you have a theory like Orientalism and the representation of the Africans in music videos or globalization in Malay dramas. Now, all of these terms might sound foreign to you now, okay, but you will be familiar with them once we go through these topics, okay. But some of these uh, concepts, okay, we will cover towards the end of the semester. So it would help if you go through all your slides first, okay, to get a better understanding. And if you choose a topic that has not yet been covered in the early part of the semester, okay, I can help you, okay, can help uh, illuminate or make it or make you understand, okay, about that particular concept. So, so. Basically, okay, it's open up to you what you want to do, the topic, as long as there is the three components, okay? The, is, uh, the concepts or theories, the issues, and the particular selected me media, okay? So, the outline. So, all the assignments must include an introduction, a literature review. So, what's a literature review, okay? Uh, you have to list down, okay, what other people have discussed, uh, with regard to the issue you are writing, okay, and the conceptual framework. <clears throat> so here, conceptual framework is this, okay, all these concepts and theories that you choose. <clears throat> so when you want to do the uh, assignment, you have to, uh, to refer to a particular media. So you have to tell me, okay, your method in sampling those media, which one, if you're going to study representation of women in Korean TV series, you have to select a couple of TV series to give the exam, example, okay, to study. So you can provide results, issue, and many are here. Okay, don't worry, you can start doing it, but if you have questions, we can discuss, all right, anytime. So the format, you can see it here. Most importantly, no plagiarism, okay? Do not copy from anywhere. <coughs> because 20% of plagiarized content can equal to zero grading. <coughs> so this is the rubric. <coughs> so the third assignment is the video presentation. But it's not really a presentation lah. It's more of a video that you have to do based on your written assignment. It's a five minutes video capturing the essence of your written assignment just now. That means written assignment and video assignment both will have the same topic. It's just that here you need to summarize the content, okay? What are the essence, the result that you get, okay? You don't have to talk about methodology here, okay? So you can use your own creativity, okay, whether you want to use, you want to go and shoot or you just want to use footages, okay, but do not use PowerPoint, okay, so and how to submit, you will have to submit the video later, okay, on YouTube. All right, so I think that should be it, okay, I'm giving you, okay, the insight overview of what is expected of you in this course. Okay, so these are the work that you need to do, All right? Okay, so the exact day, okay, we will discuss later on. So all of these resources are available in 
classroom. Okay. All right. So we need to move on. Okay. We're going to start with our first topic. Okay. Okay or not? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Yes, yes. The groups will you choose it or we choose the, our group? Sorry. Groups are uh, good questions uh, because you are not meeting each other in uh, physical face to face. Okay, it's hard for you to contact one another, and because I also want you to learn about each other because we're from different backgrounds. So I will choose your group members. Okay. Okay. So we we'll probably okay, meet in the next class. All right. Good. Okay, so can you see the slides? <clears throat> can you see the slides? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So uh, our first topic see. is the Muslim societies. Okay, like I said just now. Okay. So why do we start with this topic? Because I want to give you like a background. Okay. Before we talk about the media, okay, we talk about the societies, okay, the kind of people that is being affected by the media. Of course, we're going to focus more specifically on the Muslim societies, okay. So here, all right, we're just going to go in general, okay, we're going to look at, okay, the different groups of Muslims, okay. I obviously cannot identify or list out the uh, what the number of societies, Muslim societies in the world, because there's just too many, too many. Okay, but today all I want is for you to understand the context. Okay, that Muslims okay have different backgrounds. Okay, we all pray to the same God, but we all there's only one God. Okay, we pray to Allah, but Okay, our historical background is the different. Okay, so this is what we try to cover today. Okay, so this is basically just the list of content. Now, okay, we all know, okay, that we profess to Islam, we are Muslims, okay, but how much do we really know about our people? Okay, most of the time we only know about our own people. Okay, the Malays would know about they are about their own society, okay? Maybe, okay, coming to IIUM or UIA is your first exposure to Islam or Muslims from different groups and societies, <clears throat> okay? That's why I want to see your faces so I can see, okay, my students from different back backgrounds, okay? I can see Jiang Rui, Ma Jiang Rui. Are you in campus or are you in China? Assalamualaikum, Madam. And where you are at the Mahalla? Pardon? Mahalla. Is you are in Mahalla? Wow. Yeah. The Chinese that sounds like an Arab. Okay. <laughs> Ma Yangri. Okay. Is there another glamorous, uh, glamour or glamour Malay name you have? Uh, I have a Muslim name. My name yeah. is Ma Amina. Amina. Okay. I yeah. know a lot of the Chinese students. Amina or Aisha. Is there an Aisha Chinese students here? Uh, I, I I don't know which is uh answer because my Ch my Chinese friends are called the Chinese name students called the Muslim name. So yeah, no, Malay Muslim name. Yes, not Malay name. You're right. It's the Muslim name. Okay, oh, okay. Yan Tang Ma. What's your Muslim name? <laughs> it's Asia. Asia. See, it's Aisha or Asia. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about Yang Yang? Oh, yeah. Madam, Madam, my name is Khadija. Khadija, see? Alright, so all the Chinese that comes here, okay, they have good Muslim names. Khadija, uh, Asiya, Amina, the Prophet's mom, the Prophet's wives, right? Okay? Alright, but Yang Yang, uh, in Malay, Yang Yang means love, love. So yes, I, I know that. Love, love. Yang Yang? Okay? Okay. All right, so like I'm going, okay, what was I talking about? All right, okay, Muslims, okay, we have different backgrounds and coming to IIUM, okay, will give you a diff exposure to different groups of Muslim societies, okay. 
obviously the world will have misconceptions of us but do we have misconceptions about our own brothers and sisters yes definitely right i i see in iium online the international students don't like the local students the local students don't like the international students is this true yes no no asia you like the local students yes you like, you like the local brothers oh <laughs> <laughs> cannot Pang Tong Hao Ma, what do I call you, brother? Hmm? You can call me Hamda. Hamda. Hamza, Hamza. Hamza, oh, I thought Hamida, like Korean. Okay, Hamza. Okay, yeah. all right. So Hamza, the hero, ah, huh? the Muslim hero. Okay. So there is misconcept, misconceptions. All right, that we like to stereotype. Okay, and sometimes we relate certain uh, attitude towards a particular group. Or a particular community okay and this is very day dangerous all right why do we stereotype because we are ignorant and we don't know and when we don't know about a certain thing it's very easy to stereotype to make us understand okay so where can we find Muslims where can we find Muslims I I U M all right so obviously we can find Muslims from all over the world. But when you look at the media, where do you think you can find Muslims? On the internet. You on the internet? The internet. <laughs> yes, of course, that's number one place to find Muslims. Yes, on the internet. Okay, but what I mean is, all right, when you watch television or when you watch a movie and there's a Muslim character, Okay, they wouldn't usually look look like you, Khadija, and they wouldn't look like Faisal, Faisal what yeah, Faisal Hamza, but they would look like any of what they would probably look like your Arab brothers, isn't it? Okay, so there is a homogeneous or monolithic uh, representation of Muslims in the me in the media. Okay. So why this is what we would like to discuss in this course, all right? Okay, so I'm not going to go through this, okay? We all know about Islam. We profess Islam, okay? But we are, okay, the world's second largest religion. Okay, we are the world's second largest, okay? We're not number one. What's number one? Christianity. Of course, Christianity, all right? But while we are the second largest, we are the fastest growing. What do we mean by fastest growing? A conversion to Islam. Highest rate of conversion. Yeah, okay. It's not just about conversion. That means there are more and more people becoming Muslims. Conversion second, firstly because Muslims like to procreate. Okay, Muslims have lots of children. Uh, good for us. Okay, if you see in Malaysia, the Chinese would have two children, lah, two children maximum. All right, the Indian would have three or four, the Malays will have seven. Okay, uh, all right, so young, young, love, love, you know what to expect if you marry a Malay boy. Okay, but point is, all right, okay, we are becoming, okay, they project in less than a hundred years, kid. Okay? Islam will be the number one religion. So while we are very big in numbers, okay, we are everywhere in the world, why is there still a lot of misconception about us? Okay? Why can't the media especially see us as more than just okay, a group of Arab terrorists, for example? Okay? So we are currently 24% of world population, okay? That means one in every four people in this world is a Muslim, okay? So one in four is Muslims, okay? So what it means again, we are very, we are every, everywhere. But despite that, okay, although we are big in numbers, we are not always the same. Okay, because we are made up of different 
societies. And the main misconception is that Muslims are Arabs. Okay? Can you understand? All right, yeah. even among us Muslims. Okay? Maybe your time, you are living in a more globalized world, you are more exposed. But if you are living in the 80s or in the 90s, the Malay Muslims in Malaysia would probably be very familiar with the Arab Muslim, but they would never thought of seeing a Chinese Muslim. Muslims in China, Muslims in Africa, Muslims in uh, what we call it, uh, South Asia. They think of India as Hindustan. All right, the romantic dancing. Okay, they think of China as communists. They have a very stereotypical understanding, even I think until now. All right, why? Because most of the time what we learn about the world comes from the me, from the media. Okay, so look, let's look at us, all right, because sometimes these are the information that we take for granted, okay, that most Muslims live in South Asia, okay, most Muslims live in South Asia, not in the Middle East, okay, pop quiz, okay, which country is, has the most is the most uh, Muslim populated country? Indonesia. 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 But Indonesia. these are new information to many people, especially among non Muslims, European Muslims. Okay, because sometimes they don't even know Indonesia. They think Indonesia is in Bali. Bali, they know. Okay? They don't know that this beautiful country is populated by Muslims, more Muslims in Indonesia than in Saudi or in Iraq, right? But these people don't talk about, okay? Or when we talk about the world's richest country, okay, which country is the world's richest country? The US. Saudi Arabia. The US, US. They generally we would think about the US, right? Because they China. show so much. Riches as in rate or Pardon? total amount? Riches in the amount of the money reserves they have as well China. as the stability of their economy. Okay? Is it China? Saudi Arabia. China? China. China. Uh, China. I think. Khadija, are you that rich? <laughs> huh? Dubai. Dubai, yes. Dubai looks like it's very rich. Okay? <laughs> But when we talk about the richest country in the world, we don't usually think of a Muslim country, don't we? Okay? We would think about what? As said on Google, is the United States. Yes, because Google is owned by the US. <laughs> All right? The richest country in the world is Qatar. Google that up, you'll get the information as well. Okay, but as Muslims, do we appreciate that fact? We don't even know. Because it's all U.S. to us. Okay, all of you who say U.S., you like Trump so much. Okay, so we know more about other societies. All of us know everything about the U.S., don't we? Everything about the U.S., we know. Okay, at least 10, uh, what we call it, super Marvel superheroes. You can give it to me in 10 seconds flat. Okay? But at least 10 Muslim superheroes. Alamak, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad. Okay? So we know less about our own people than we do about okay, other people. Okay? So what? Although we cannot, we don't want to reduce it to the media. That means we blame everything up to the media. But we cannot deny that is mainly also the influence of the me, of the media. Okay, but unfortunately, while we have Qatar as the richest country in the world, most of our Muslim brothers live in the poorest part of the world. Okay, so in Somalia, okay, in some part of in Africa, okay, we are still very so we are, like I said here, is an extreme society. You have the richest and the poorest, developed and not developed. 
Okay? And we look very different as well. Okay? So here, so South Asia, here. Most Muslims are here. Alright? And then second only is Arab countries. You know, the combination. But if I were to ask, okay, the Malaysian students or the Chinese student, name me the Arab countries, uh, Saudi, Dubai. Dubai is not even a country. Okay? So we don't know about each other. Okay? So, of course, you have the Southeast Asia, such a small, small area. But it is the most dense Muslim countries. Okay, the number is not as big as those in South Asia and Arab countries. But what do we mean by dense? That if you look all around you, we are all Muslims. Okay. And then, of course, okay, many parts of the, of the world. So here we are, 25% of the world's population, okay? So here, the most dense, this is what I mentioned just now, okay? That everywhere you go, people are most Muslims. So when you are living in a country that is highly, uh, what we call it, it's, uh, what we call it, uh, controlled by Muslims, Muslims are the status quo, your background, the way you live, your experiences would be different from the Muslims who live here. Okay? Or the Muslims who live here. Uh, you see, that's why Americans always make wrong movies about us. Because there's not enough Muslims here. So if you think about trying to go to another country, okay, later on, don't think about going to UK or somewhere. Go here. There's not enough Muslims here. Okay, go to Brazil, huh? Asia, you go Brazil. Okay, young, young, you go Venezuela. Uh, okay, don't find Malay boyfriend, find a Latino boyfriend. Okay, you will help, okay, the religion. Okay, and when you are there, make lots of babies. Uh, right, so we need to conquer this area. Okay, so the point is here, okay, we are composed, when I say we, the Muslims, are composed of very diverse societies. Okay, and each group here have different social, political, history and back, background. Right? And not only we come from different geographical area, on our beliefs also, we have different, uh, what we call it, understanding. Okay? We have different, uh, uh, what we call it, sex and admonition. Okay? We have the Shia, we have the Sunni, we have the Hanafi, we have the Maliki. Okay? But I dare not discuss this because this is not my area. Okay? I just want to stress to you that we are very different in one sense. Okay? While we are all Muslims, okay, we have different beliefs. Okay? And we have different his histories, our culture, our country, our social, po social politics, okay? So here I give you an example, okay? Let's study Africa. Some people think Africa is a country. Okay, oh, go to Africa lah. Which part? Okay, oh, he's African. Which African country does he come from? Okay, just because, okay, he has dark skin, he's tall, he's got curly hair, oh, African. Alright, so Africa is a very, is a big conti continent. But when we talk about Africa, we only see the same thing, oh, Africa jungle, safari. Okay, we have this romanticized, exotic understanding of Africa, right? Because when you watch the movie Africa, do they show you a developed country? With intelligent people? No, usually poor. Oh, they only show Africans don't even have clothes on. Have you ever heard of this movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy? It's a very funny movie, okay? Uh, you can Google it later, okay? See, they make fun of God also. God Must Be Crazy, the movie. It's a very old movie. Okay? But it shows how the Westerners represent Africa. Africa. Okay, when you think Africa, what do you think? Black people and um, like poor. 
poor people. Oh, yes. Or Lion King. Hakuna Matata. Okay, we see the kings, the lions, all right? We don't talk about this, the development, okay, of the African, pe African people. And we don't acknowledge that Africa has a rich and diverse his history. Now, if you look at the map here, do you know that this is South Africa? This is North Africa. This is the part of Africa that the media always talk about. Mandela, Trevor Noah, Charlie Theron, they come from here. But here, that's why most of us, we haven't even heard about country like Niger, Chad, and suddenly your roommate is from Chad. Okay, so this is where the Muslims live. Okay, the Muslims, a majority Muslims live in North, Af North Africa. Okay, so you can see how diverse the affair African society, and what more if you talk about Muslim Af Africans. Okay, and so this group of Africans, okay, they live quite near, geographically here, very near to Middle East. So that's why you have Somalis, and then you have the Egyptians, and many people don't even know Egyptians are not Arabs. We think Salah is an Arab. You think Salah is an Arab? You know Salah? Hmm. Muhammad Salah. Muhammad Salah, you know? Yes. Hamza, you know Salah? Of no. You don't know. See? See, in China, they don't even no. care about Salah. Okay? And you are betul. Okay? So Salah, the, 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 what, the European fans usually think of him as an Arab man. But he's not Arab. He's actually Af African. But, huh? He looks like Arab. So this is the things that we must acknowledge. Okay? So people, Africans here can speak Arabic. Africans here cannot speak Arabic. But are they both Muslims? Yes. Okay? Afri Muslims here speak English. Muslims here speak uh, what is French. Other than own their own native language. But they are all African and they are almost Muslims. Okay? So why these differences? Okay, because they have been colonized by different groups of, pe groups of people. Okay? So here, okay, when we talk about countries here, they were mostly, uh, what we call it, colonized by the British. Okay? Up till here. So that's why, okay, in Nigeria. Okay, you know, Nigerians speak very good English. Yes. Right? And if you have African students, so you have a friend, they're African, they are English, when they speak, it's very, very good. Okay? But these countries here, they speak French. And they look more like Europeans. You know that Africa, down here, yes, you have the black Africans. But as you move up towards here, they become fairer and fairer. And they tend to look like Arabs here. And they tend to look like Europeans here. Can you understand? So if you find your friend being an Algerian, okay, you just think he's an Arab because he looks like an Arab. Okay? But he's actually F, African. And he speaks French. He doesn't speak Arab. Arabic, okay? So again, very diverse. And not only that, well, they have a different social party, political background. They also have different B beliefs, although all of them are most Muslims. Okay. Can I follow so far? All right. So what is the point of understanding this? Like I said, just to acknowledge that we as Muslims are very diverse. And it is our responsibility to know more about our brothers and sisters. Okay. Why is it that the Americans or the Western media are able to portray us in such a negative way? Because we don't even know about our own commu community. We don't know about the African Muslims. Okay? We don't know about the Indian Muslims. So when the Americans or the Western media tells us, oh, this is what Africa is, so we believe that. Can you follow? Okay? 
Afra, okay, other than that, history of the Muslim societies. Okay, of course, you've already know about the time of the Prophet. Okay, the ideal Muslim history. And then we had the four guided caliphs. Okay, Sayyidina Abu Bakar, Umar, Usman, Ali. Okay, I'm not going to go through in detail. Okay, you know the stories. But what do I want to highlight here? That there is a dynamic change in the Islamic history. History. All right, and then what happens? What happened to Ali? What happened to Sayyidina Ali? Anyone names Ali here? Hmm. Thank God you're Alif, huh? So he got assassinated, right? Okay. But point is what there is a change in the social political life of the Muslims. No longer, okay, are we a caliphates? We have become monarchies. You know what monarchies, okay, instead of us elect, you know, here elected and voted by the shura who should be the next leader, which is a fair way of doing it. But now when we become monarchies, it's based on descendants, your son, my son, they become king. And this has affected the way, okay, the justice system and the political systems of the Muslims, right? Later on, we will cover also because why we have to talk about this because while it changed the Muslim social political landscape, okay, this is was also the golden era of the Mus Muslims. Okay, we hardly acknowledge that most of the media system that we have today, modern media system, actually originated during this time. Okay. Of course, with the fall of the Ottoman, the last caliphate, okay, there's so many more here, all right? I don't even know how to list them, okay? We welcome the colonial history. When the colonials come, okay, and conquered most of the Muslim countries, and this is a real change and the real effect, okay, and this influenced the life of the modern Muslims too, modern Muslims today. Okay? As a result of a colonization, we all have different institutions. Okay? We have different systems. Okay? <clears throat> Some of us, like in Malaysia, okay, we were colonized by the British. So our system is very different from our neighbor. Okay? Which neighbor? Indonesia. Yes, Faisal. Although I cannot hear you, okay, I can read your lips. Okay? So Indonesia were uh, colonized by the Dutch. So while the Malaysian looks like the Indonesian, but our history is very, is not very different, but it's still di different. And it has affected our social political landscape today. Okay? The way Indonesians understand politics, understand social life is different from how a Malaysian, uh, what we call it, experience it. Okay? And our systems... We follow our colonial system, colonial system. Okay? Yeah. Alright, of course. Malaysia here, okay, under uh, British, Indonesia, under Netherlands or the Dutch. Okay? And then South Asia. Okay? India, Pakistan, Bangladesh also under the Brits. Okay? How come the Middle East? Have they ever been colonized? No, most, not all. Okay, most of them, especially Saudi, okay, have never been uh, what we call it uh, directly colonized. Okay, but if you can ask, right? If they have never been colonized, they have had all this freedom. How come they have not been developing? Uh, that's another issue altogether. Okay. So these countries are usually here, Middle East, have been a proxy of the British. Okay? And then, of course, in Africa, we've already discussed that. So what was the point of this again? Just to show us, okay, the colonial, colonial system that we inherit, inherit. Okay? What about here? Yang Yang, your home. Of course, okay? The Chinese have never been colonized, right? But they have a very unique experience with commun communism, okay? And now they want to colonize the world. 
Is it true? Hamza, you want to colonize us? No, no, it's not a church actually. No, no. Huh? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Colonize US only. Okay. So here we are. Right? So where are we? Here we are. I don't know where we are. Okay. So what is the result of colonialism? Okay, bye-bye Islamic Caliphate, bye-bye Islamic political, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, agendas. Because the colonials have uh, directed most of the Muslim countries into different political systems that are mostly secure, secular. Okay? So, countries, Muslim countries, Indonesia, hundreds of millions of Muslims. Is, that, is it an Islamic country? No. Malaysia, Islam is the official religion. But is it an Islamic country? No. Uh, no. 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 You can say we are Muslim country. We are not Islamic country. Why aren't we Islamic country? Uh, because you guys are mixed with Chinese and Indians, I think. Okay. Not because of we are multiracial, okay? Because we do, uh, we do not uh, apply the Sharia law. Yes, very. Because we do not abuse, the, we do not practice the Sharia, Sharia. Okay, we still have monarchies. Ah, in Malaysia, so many kings. Okay, and we're very secure, secular. Okay. And some countries, especially in Africa, after colonials, colonialism, they are left with regimes. No proper guard. They have government, but the government is sometimes corrupted. Okay? They are overpowered by regimes. Okay? Sharia. If I were to ask all of you, ask the Malaysian students, ask the Indonesian students, okay? Do they want their country to adopt the Sharia? Uh. Mostly would be we would be quite scared. We are scared of the Sharia. How come we're scared of the Sharia? Alamak, no more Netflix. Okay? We are afraid, oh then we have the idea, oh with Sharia, then somebody's hand is going to get cut. Okay? The so, image of Sharia law has been so normalized to be barbaric when it's yeah. actually one of the best ways of laws. One of the best laws and ways of life. Very good. Because we have been always told that the normalized, the best way is democracy. Okay? But the interpretation of democracy is Western democracy. But have you seen any Western democracy that has been very successful? They show us their success. But you look at the US, they are not the world's number one economy. Okay, are they fair to all people in the US? No. Then you have the Black uh, Life Matters, La Me Too movement. Everybody feels that they are being discriminated in the US. But we still thrive. We want to go have democracy like white people, like in the US. Why? Because we too have a very monolithic understanding of the world. We see the world the way some people want us to see the world. Can you understand? All right, so this is the issue that we would like to discuss. So when we talk about Islamophobia, all right, so boring lah Islamophobia. In IIUM, we talk about it so much, okay? But the issue with Islamophobia, the concern is not just Islamophobia among non-Muslims. What about Islamophobia among Muslims? You are afraid of Sharia? I got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous also about the Sharia. So is that considered Islamophobia? In one way or another, yes. Because why are we scared? We have a stereotypical understanding because we do not know. Why do I not know? Because the media does not tell me, the education system does not tell me, the government does not tell me. Why aren't everyone telling me? Because everyone is part of a system that's already established. Can you understand? Okay. So we will discuss that in more details later on. Okay. 
what you need to understand today, okay, that the world that we live in, okay, is very unique, very diverse, and it's a unique time to be a Muslim, right? And what happens, okay? The Muslims, they fight one another, okay? After they create regimes and then monarchies, okay? And there's, there's going to be power struggle. And then there's the inter-religious fight, intra-religious fights. Then you have like in Syria, when they're killing, where they are killing one another, okay? Where their leaders are killing their people. So what happens to the people? They run away, okay? They migrate, okay? They become refugees. But when they go out of their country, they bring Islam and Muslim societies with them. So then we create Muslim diaspora, diaspora. So there's another group of societies, okay? For example, the Syrian who stayed in, the, in Syria and the Syrians who ran Okay, probably they immigrated to Germany. Will they have the same life? Would they have a the same outlook about religion, about everything? Obviously, very deep, very different. Even their understanding and their practice of is Islam. Okay, so with refugee uh, per movement and this immigration, there's positives and negatives. Of course, it's not a good life for the refugees, okay? But at the same time, they have helped, okay, to populate the world with Islam. That's why Europe is becoming a Muslim continent. And this is what they are, the Western world, the European world is very afraid of. If you look at Germany, they predict that in a couple of decades, it's going to be a Muslim country. Germany is going to be a Muslim country. Okay? You don't trust me, you go ask Google. Because Google you trust, right? Okay? You have countries like Germany, like France, where they are becoming more, Mus more Muslims. Okay? So whether they are good or practicing Muslim, that's a different story lah. Okay? So, what can we say? We can say that we are not simply Arabic. Okay, of course lah, we're Muslims, we know that. But to the rest of the world, okay, we must show them, we must tell them, alright, that there are other groups of Muslim societies. Okay? Because the media tends to stereotype because it's so much easier. All right? How do you portray a Muslim? Show an Arab man. Okay? Or an Arab lady. They will never show us, right? The Malays. Uh, the Malays are usually very discriminated. We never get any Hollywood time. At least they, sometimes they will portray the Indians, okay? And to them, Asians are Chinese. All right? When they say Asian, Chinese. Chinese, Korean, those are Asians. Okay? So we need to tell the world, okay, there are more of us here and we too need to be inclu included. Okay? So, but we are also dynamic. We are cha changing. Okay? So you have, for example, Hamza, Yang Yang, Khadija, Asya coming here. The way you will change, okay? That you will be a different group of a Chinese Muslim compared to those who are back in your country. Because of the experiences you will gain here. And I hope you will gain good experiences. Okay, maybe because of this pandemic, you're mostly stuck with one another in campus. Okay, but I pray that things will get better and you will see, okay? And you will be able to meet, okay? Muslims from other societies, okay? And your experiences will make you dyna dynamic. You will change. Okay? And we are plural. Okay? That means we're not exactly the same. But, okay, we have uniting factors such as our faith. Okay? Our agreement on certain issues. For example, the issues of Palestine. Okay? And we are hybrids. Okay? You can no longer just say the Malays. The Chinese, 
Okay, we are hybrids. What do we mean by hybrids? We are mixed already. Okay, imagine that uh, Syrian immigrant that went to Germany. Okay, he went there, found a pretty German girl, married a German girl. What about their children? Which group will that, those children belong to? Okay, would those children be European or would they be Arabs? Okay, so they are high hybrids and their experiences will be different as, as well. Okay, so this is also an issue, okay, it's a sociological concern, especially for example in France, where you have a lot of Algerians Muslims. Okay, they grow up in France, they speak French, but they are Muslims. So they are French, but they are Muslims. So they don't really belong in a particular, uh, what we call it, the French people do not consider them as French. Okay, but the Algerians, uh, what we call it, ancestors don't really consider them Algerians. So where do this group of people belong to? Okay, so there are many of us now, we are high hybrids. Okay. Of course, we are global, okay, we've discussed, we are heterogeneous, and most of us, we are modern. Okay, what do we mean by modern? What do we mean by modern? Typically, a modern man is a man who has uh, the ability to control his fate. Can you understand? Actually, modern word, the word modern is quite secular in nature. All right, but we're just going to take the basic understanding of modern, modernity. All right, you are all modern. Why? Because you are here, right, studying on your own, deciding what am I going to eat today, whether I'm going to wake up or not. Okay? So, finally, how do we relate all this with the media? Okay? Because later on, Okay, in the coming topics, I'm not going to specifically address the Muslim society. I'm going to discuss more about the effects of media on society in general and the theoretical foundations to that. Okay, but you have understood that Muslim societies are unique, so you must be able to relate on your own. Can you understand? Okay. Because we've discussed Muslim societies are unique and dynamic. Okay, and we are linked to our social political histories. Okay, and histories and the social political histories has made us usually the victims in the Western, me Western media. All right, okay. But how come? Why do they hate us? Nabila, why do they hate us? Hmm? Because they don't like what isn't normal to them. Yes, okay, because we're different. Okay? But at the they same time... Grow up our image as much as they can in... Especially when there are shows that is like Muslim representation. Oh, you need a white savior. You can show your hair to a white boy. Or like, oh, this is how you take things. But it's all just messed up. <laughs> Well, isn't everything messed up, right? Yeah. Okay. So here, okay, I would like to be fair in this uh, course in, to, in saying that we can't really just blame the media, okay, because the media have its positive and negative sides. Media do have positive effects. So while we have this, we can also have this, that there are more Muslim representat representation. That Muslim societies are now modern, are now hybrids, are now all over the place. Can we come up with our own media system? Our own media co content? Okay? Have you heard of Rami? Okay, most of you have not because it's a Hulu series. Okay, in Malaysia, we only have Netflix. Alright, so this is the guy. Okay, He's, he created a comedy series focusing on the life of a Muslim man in the U.S. Okay? So Rami is an Emmy-nominated drama. He has a comic series. He, I think, won the Golden Globes. So you have a Muslim 
Okay, TV program produced by a Muslim, focus on Muslim life, acted by a Muslim. Okay, being acknowledged in the Western media. But, of course, right, Remy's representation of the Muslim life is based on his experience being an American Muslim. Okay, so when you watch Rami, you would probably disagree with some of his, uh, what we call it, points or some of his narratives. Okay, you would probably see him eating meat. Okay, you would probably see him hang around in clubs. But this is the life of the American Muslims that's quite different from your life as the Malay Muslim in UIA. Understand? Okay. All right. So I'm just going to leave you with that. Okay. Just to establish about Muslim societies. Okay. You are advised to read more. Okay. To uncover more. To discover more about your own heritage. Okay. And your own linkages with the other Muslim Muslim societies. All right. Because if we are able to acknowledge this, okay, as the foundation, then we can understand how media affects us differently and how media can be used to our banner benefit. All right. Any questions? Okay, internalized Islamophobia. Is that the phrase? Okay, I'm not sure. I've not, I'm not familiar uh, with it, but it probably is. Okay, and sometimes even the Muslim countries, okay, the politicians internalize Islamophobia among the Muslims using religion to create fear. Okay, sometimes the Muslims, you know, they say that you have to be very submissive. People cannot go against leaders, cannot go against politicians. So this is different interpretations. All right. Okay, any other questions? Okay, all right, so for now, okay, we will end here. I would like to inform you, okay, the way we're going to handle this hybrid education system we have now, okay, we're only going to meet for lecture once a week, which is on Tuesday, not Thursday, yeah, Tuesday. So we will try to finish one topic or half a topic each, uh, each class, okay, each lecture. Okay, so I will try to save up some of your data. <coughs> so when we meet, please switch on your camera because you're using your data only for one class. But, okay, we are, you are free to ask questions. We can discuss in class. If you have a question, I would rather you ask in the WhatsApp group <coughs> so that everybody can come into this discuss, discussion. So, uh, madam? Yes? The seven topics you uploaded in, in Google Classroom. Are Sorry? You uploaded only seven uh, topics in Google. Yes. Cloud. These all we will get, or we will you will upload more. Uh, I will upload one more topic. Some uh, of I think two of those folders are empty. Yeah. Okay. So the whole course is eight eight topics, right? Eight topics. Yes. Okay. Short. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so if there is no question, thank you for your attention. We will meet next Tuesday. Any information, okay, we can use the class WhatsApp group. Okay? Thank you so much, madam. All right, welcome. We end the class. Thank you, madam. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Okay, Thank you, madam. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Assalamualaikum. Okay.